So, yeah, we welcome you, Abuna, and the world will recompense you to all your efforts. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be with you, and uh, thank you for the invitation. We'll start with a, a question. Uh, just to uh, so this is this is uh, an online question. If you text, you, you bring your te your phone. As I don't know if there is reception or not. Hopefully there will be reception. Um, if you take up your phone and you uh, send to this number, 37607, So this is the text that you are going to send to, the number of the, the phone, 37607. And in the body of the text, write Paul 5M. Paul 5M. So this is the number that you are texting to. 37607 and you will put in the body of the text Paul 5M so now once you uh, you are in it will send you a confirmation that you are you are entering the poll that that is online what do we put in the message Paul 5M no any any Paul 5M just put Paul 5M so this is the as if you are sending Paul 5M to this number 37607 P A U L 5 M. And I have 5 M's. And that's why there is 5 M here. And this is Maria, 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 Mark, Maria, and Monica. And I will tell you a funny story. When Maria and Monica were, were actually born, they are twins. They are twins. The few, few minutes after they were born, our uh, names were Maria and Sophia. This is what we agreed on, Manana and myself, because people are thinking, ah, oh, we are going for the let letter M. No, we, we didn't care much about the letter M. So we were naming the twin girls, Maria and Sophia, till the registered nurse came and told us, what are you going to uh, name the, the girls? And we told her, Maria and Sophia, because it rhymes very well. Then, uh, then the, 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 the lady said, no, 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 you can't name her uh, Sophia. This is not fair. So I told her, what is not fair? She told me, the, 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 the mom's name is start with M, Mora, Mark, and Maria, and now so Sophia will be feeling left out and she's not belonging to the family. So she is having, and I said, you know what, it makes sense. What she is saying, she is it's making sense. And uh, if you know Abuna, Abuna, Rafael in St. Mark, he had twin girls. But I didn't remember exactly what was the names of the girls. I know that there is Maria in the name, but I was not sure. So I texted, all of this is happening within a few, few minutes after the, 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 they are born. So I texted Abuna and I told them, uh, so Abuna, is, w w we are thinking of Maria and Monica. What are the names of your daughters? And he told me Maria and Monica. <laughs> so I told him, okay. <laughs> don't uh, don't get upset about stealing the names. So uh, all of this because of five M's. So Paul, when you, I think we are all. It doesn't say. By the way, whatever answers, it, it is anonymous. I, I don't know who is answering what, and I I have no way to know uh, who is answering what. So everybody answered. Yeah, we get the reply right. Okay, so now we are speaking about. Will heaven ever be boring? This is the question. Will, ever, will heaven ever be boring? And 40% of the people are saying yes, and 60% are saying no. So if, if heaven will be boring, they, they are changing. If heaven will be boring, so... Do we answer? <laughs> yes, so if you answer, if you answer yes, heaven will be boring, send A. If you answer no, send B. The boring percentage is getting less. So, Abuna, maybe the more you talk about heaven, the less the, the less the less the percentage. The maybe we can ask this question in the end. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I wanna I wanna tell you a confession that this this topic is is tough to speak about because the 
Do you know Abuna Tadr Sha'ub? One of, what is the best topic that you that will ask Abuna Tadrish to speak about? If you know Abuna Tadrish Sha'ub, well, it's very obvious. This is heaven. He has been talking about heaven in the past almost 11 years in every single sermon. If you have a recording of Abuna and you chase all his recordings, he has been speaking about heaven for the past at least 10 to 11 years. Everything, even if he's not speaking about heaven, the, the topic is not heaven, but he is, speak, he is bringing heaven in the equation all the time, all the time. To the extent that uh, one time he was giving a retreat for servants in, in Egypt, to, uh, to the church of uh, Abuna Dawood Lamai and uh, after Abuna finished the talk everybody left and there was a lady that sat in the, in the hall and she didn't leave so everybody was eating and they returned back to her and asked her you are not going to eat with us and she told them why you uh, why you wake me up uh, I was why you are, you are waking me up? I was even thinking of heaven, and I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm not that hungry, and I can, I, it can wait. So, uh, my, 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 your problem is you are stuck with me because I'm not that uh, living the, the life of Abuna Tadros, where, where he is really, really consumed with heaven. I was talking with Abuna a couple of days back. I was asking him a question. Uh, Abuna is becoming very, very weak. Uh, his energy is very, very less. And it was the, the time of Vespers of the, the Feast of the Cross in New York. So the difference in time. So Abuna, uh, Abuna was telling me, uh, he is telling me, I'm so sorry, please pray for me. If I, I'm telling him, Abuna, why are you sorry? He told me I couldn't go to the church because I'm, I'm, very, I'm very tired. So he told me, pray for me. So I told him uh, all the prayers of the saints. So Abuna told me, uh, don't think that I'm asking you to pray for me because of my health. So I told them, okay, so what do you want me to pray for you for? He told me, pray for me so as I will be honest in the time that God is giving me. And I will do something with the time. It blew my mind. Really, it blew my mind. If you have seen the books and the effort that Abu Tadros has done and contributed to the Coptic Church like no one ever before. Not, none ever has, has done all this effort. Maybe with the exception of two, Abuna Tadr Sha'ub, uh, Abuna Matta and, um, and Pope, Pope Shenouda. Uh, in, in regards of the material of, of, uh, of uh, books and the effort has been done in education, it's, it's unbelievable. And he is telling me, uh, pray for me, because that I feel guilty that I'm not using my time properly. And he is that sick and he's that old. And it really blew my mind. And I said, he's, he's in some, somewhere else. He's really in somewhere else. And uh, the, the whole point of speaking about heaven, it is very tough to speak about something that you are, you never been, something that you, uh, you, you have read about. But uh, I'm assuring you that God, through many times and incidents in our life, that is sending very, very strong messages through people that you know, that you have experienced as this story that I have just shared with you about Abuna Tadris. So, um, right now, the, the will heaven ever be boring? The update is 29, almost 30 percent is saying yes, uh, 71 percent is saying no. I'm, I'm not judging, uh, and I'm not saying, ah, oh, you know what, why you are saying this? Uh, we, I'll try to remind me to do it again in the end, and we'll see. And uh, we're not going to get any uh, <laughs> any uh, benefits if you change your mind. I mean, unless you really want to change your mind or you really change your mind. So, um, this is the first question, and the second question I will I will skip for the sake of the time. But when you when you read the book of Revelation, you you stop at this. Uh, paramount of the book. The book starts with a lot of struggles and messages to the, to the, to the, the, the churches and the bishops who are in charge of the churches and God is telling everyone, I know your works, I know your works for seven times, but different themes and different goals and different mindset. 
But in, and you, you see the, the, the war that will happen between uh, the church and, uh, and Satan and all his followers, and how God is going to conquer in the end. But you reach in, in, uh, in the, God, the Revelation chapter 20 now, 21 and says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, is no longer there. Also there was no more sea, then I joined, and usually in the book of Revelation, when John never spoke about himself. In the Gospels, he never mentioned his name. In the three epistles, he never mentioned his name. But now in Revelation, every time he's saying, I, John, who is writing this, I, John, is writing this lay. Why this is happening? Because it's a prophetic book. A book that is going to, God is saying, I'm going to, this is going to happen in the future. So as to assure us, this is not just anyone who is writing St. John, the beloved is saying, I am John, is seeing this and I am telling you this. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and will be their God. And God will wipe away every tear and ev from their eyes, and shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. It tells you how much God is assuring and letting John to write it down because it's a very important message. All of those, and I saw heaven and earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, is no longer there. There will be time where you will you will be thinking of going home and the, the home is not there. Uh, the fourth street is no longer there. The, the promenade is, is not there. The sea is not there. This beautiful place will not be there. You are seeing and there is nothing will be there. And I'm not telling you to scare you, but I'm telling you as a fact that this will happen. The, the, and heaven and... So I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And the Lord said, when he was speaking about his words, that heaven and earth will pass away, but not a single word of the scripture will pass away. So, what was the most beautiful place that you have ever been? Just, just through, just two or three places. Hawaii. Hawaii, yes. Hawaii. Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands. Cancun. The Red Sea, Cancun, Marsa Matroa, Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic, the Nile, the Nile. Switzerland. Switzerland. I haven't been there, but I have saw some very beautiful pictures. So, and when when you when you see this very very beautiful breathtaking places, and you there is a actually. I have been to many places, but one of the very, very amazing, it's a breathtaking location in Vancouver. There is a, there is a, there is a, I forgot the name, but it is a mountain that has, a, it's very close to, to this city, but it's a much bigger mountain, and the road is across the mountain on the external side of the mountain, and it is looking to the sea, and the, the sky the clouds is intersecting with the sea, intersecting with the mountain, intersecting with the whole. It's, it's really a breathtaking. And when you see this, you don't know if this is a sea or this is a cloud. Or, and how beautiful is this? Just a snapshot of, uh, of the locations of the, or the places that you have seen. And this, um, this mind-boggling, you, you cannot be bored when your mind is, is wondering, wow. You will never be bored, because the mind is, cannot comprehend the place, just on earth. So how beautiful will be the, 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 the new heaven and new earth? So the state of this, wow, 
will, will be think of this that you will stay in this moment forever and in this moment if you have a snapshot you will never be bored you can't be bored because your mind is you, 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 the, when the mind is bored when you do something redundant if you if you keep um, if you keep uh, hitting on a nail, hitting on a nail, after a while, your mind is already is not there. You are hitting on the nail and you are not focusing, and you keep you feel bored, or you are waiting on a customer service line for for a long time. Thank you so much for your call. Please be patient. We will come back to you. You are very important for us, and you keep. Well, okay, I, I need to get this done because your mind is chasing is chasing this uh, state of there is nothing happening. But in heaven, if this is the moment that you go and you have you see a location or a place and you, this is a breathtaking location, put yourself in this frame. You will never be bored in this setting. But you have this setting for life for eternity. So being bored is just one of the and I will share with you a very important aspect is the devil is attacking God is attacking God's people and is attacking God's place in the book of Revelation in chapter 13 it says this so he is telling the people even that heaven even does not exist and you don't need even to worry about anything it's, it's, not, it's not there even so The holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So, if God is preparing the heaven and earth, that preparation to be called the bride of, of him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. What is the meaning of tabernacle? What is the tabernacle? It's a tent. But what was special about this tent? The house of God. The house of God, okay. There was, uh, the Jewish had a certain item that has to be kept in there. Yes, there is a certain item that has, been, has, has to be kept in there. But what was really the significance? Is the house of God, is the house of God okay? Well, you are very close, but this is not really the... the, the yeah, yes, God meets the people there, so this is the place where God is present. Thank you. God is present. So this is where He dwells, where He is existing. So the word tabernacle, well, kalima, sara, gasadan, and the flesh became, and, and the word became flesh, it does not say this in the New Testament. It does not say, and the, the word became fresh. And the word tabernacle, sakana, he is present, his presence. So, if after all what happened in Genesis, all the way to Revelation, in the end of Revelation, we are in Revelation 21, and he is saying, the city, John, this is John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared to be a bride. Adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, you know, as if God is saying, it, what? Yes. Now it is done. Yes. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Yes. And he will dwell with them. Yes. And they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and there and be their God. The presence but in, in Arabic, the, the being present with God is it's called Al-Ma'iyya Ma'Allah. That you are one with God. Al-Ma'iyya Ma'Allah. Maybe if you don't know <laughs> strong Arabic, it's being together. And think of this because this will be very, impo very important. Very, very, very important thing that we will talk about in the next t talk. Adam and Eve. Okay, let me ask you a question. What is the what is a better state? Which the Bible is saying, and we know that everything is working for the good of of of, uh, of the uh, uh, of 
كل شيء كل 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 اشياء تعمل معا للخير الذين يحبون الله everything is working for good for those who love God from all their heart everything is working for good so what is which is more good Adam and Eve living with God in Eden in the in, in the paradise before the fall or not which is which is more good which is better Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were living with God in His. Pre- they are in the presence of God, but this is their utmost goal is just to see Him, uh, to greet Him, and to talk with Him. But in order to be one with Him, will never happen. I want to tell you, said. Actually, I, I was not planning to speak about about I want to tell you, but uh, speaking about heaven is always. And if you if you really are interested in knowing more and digging more, listen to anything Abu Tadros <laughs> recorded in the past 11 years. So Abu Tadros said, but Adam and Eve, they were just in the presence of God, but they never ever were one with God. They never have full communion with God. They never had union with God. So, in, in, so when the Bible is saying, and we know that everything is working for the good. So the state that Adam and Eve were before the fall is lower than the state of the new, the, every one of us. Not after the fall, after being one with God, because the the he who he who abides in me and I in him. And I will raise him up in the second day. And where I am, my servant will be also. And in the book of Revelation, it said that the one who will overcome, I will let him sit, sit on my throne. The who, who of Adam and Eve will sit on the throne of God? Definitely no way. So, but let me tell you, I'm, I'm back to the, the most important thing. So Adam and Eve, God told them, from all the trees eat, but from this tree do not eat. Do not eat so as you do not, once you eat you will, you will die. And there was the tree of life. And once Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of evil and good, God put a cherubim or an angel in front of the tree of life telling him, you cannot approach the tree of life. The tree of life is the tree, if you eat from it, you will? You will? No, no the tree of life, you, if you eat from it, you will? No, then no. Okay, there are two trees, the, the good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. If you eat from the tree of Adam and Eve, eat already from the tree of knowing knowledge, good and evil. So, their eyes is opened, and the corruption happened, and the, the fall of human beings happened. But if you eat from the tree of life, what will happen? You will live. You will live forever, because it is the tree of life. So God said, No, no, no! You can't eat from the tree of life any longer. You know why? I feel the new uh, new machines that uh, create vacuum for the food. So you put the machine in, like in a ziploc, and you create vacuum, and it stays the the vegetables or the, the fruits preserved for a very, very long time. It's, it's a little bit disgusting, but think of this, you have spoiled fr- uh, food, and you are putting, using this machine on this food to keep it, sorry, rotten for a longer time. Would you do this? Definitely not. So God said, no, no, you cannot eat from the, the tree of, of life, because when you are, if you are eating from the tree of life, you will live in sin and corruption for forever and now there is no salvation you cannot be saved are you there? fast track from this scene all the way to John, 5, John chapter 6 what has John 6 to do? God is saying I am the bread of life he who eats 
of me will, will live forever. Now, the commandment is different. Not the first commandment, do not, if you eat, you will die. Now God is saying, no, no, no. If you didn't eat, you will die. You need to eat so as you will live forever. And we cannot ignore. We cannot ignore. When speaking about heaven, which is living forever, we cannot forget the, the, the concept of eating the food that will make us live forever, which is communion. And here, because in many times we speak, look in John, in John 6, it's, this is one of the mind-blowing places. In John 6, the Lord is saying, the, the, the people are telling him, you're not going to do us a miracle or something. Moses did a miracle and he, he, he sent us a bread that is coming from, from heaven, the bread from heaven. And, uh, and he made us eat from it. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Then the, the Jews started rejecting him, telling him. Then the Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread of life which come from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur against among yourself. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws to him, and I will raise him up in the last day. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life again. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and were dead. But this is the bread which comes down from heaven that no one eat of it and not that, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh and which I shall give for the life of the world. So Adam and Eve do not eat so as you don't, you don't die. They ate and death entered and corruption entered. God said, no, you are not going to eat from the tree of life anymore. And he protected the tree of life so as not to eat from the tree of life while we are in the corrupted phase and live forever in corruption. But fast forward, because when you ask people, uh, what are the important things to do in your spiritual life? Oh, like, ah, uh, communion, baptism, uh, prayer, prayer, uh, confession, service, a lot of nice, important, very important stuff to do. And you will find people, maybe this is not, this is very common in Egypt. You will have maybe 100 people attending the liturgy, maybe 60-70% uh, taking communion, 30-40% are not taking communion, are just there. It's a You don't know what's going on, but they are just there. And uh, I asked a couple of people, and I, I, I told them, uh, why are you not taking communion? Ah, oh, this is light and fire. It is no lunar. If, if I eat from it, it will burn me. So, you, so God told you in the beginning, do not eat and we ate. And now he's telling you eat and you are, you are telling him, no, I will not eat. It's okay. So my point is, take the, the scene of Adam and Eve in, in, uh, after the fall and they are prevented from the tree of life. And how God solved the problem of death, the problem of sin, the problem of corruption through many steps, but the, the, but the utmost step that you will do personally, that, you will, that will make you really take it on a personal level, is, is communion. 
think that you apply, that all of us applied for a grant and uh, Dr. Nabil and, and Laura and myself got the grant. Okay? And we are telling you How we much? got the grant, we got a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Only? Yeah. Just, just peanuts. So you are very excited, very excited, but we didn't know that there is a timeline for redeeming the grant. So I need to go to the bank with my ID and so I told them, you know what, I, I, I'm not sure about the, the timing and I went to the bank and I got the, the check and I, I deposited it in my bank account. Every time they are asking me, I'm saying, check, I don't know, I don't think that there is an, uh, a due, due date or something for this. Penalty. Or a penalty? No, it is, it is, if you lost the window. Cash by this day. What? It's cash by this day, otherwise uh, it's yes, if you miss, Yes, if you miss the day, then it is not bad. Yeah. So going to the bank and, and giving your ID and taking the money in your hand, whether cash or check or whatever, is how you got this grant, right? If you are not there on a personal level, no one can represent you, no one can, can help you. And if you miss the window, then also you cannot make it, you cannot take it. So communion is the solution that God is sending us on every day in the liturgy. That is telling me and each one of us that by this, given for us for... No, in the, in the, in the liturgy. Given us for salvation, forgiveness of sins, remission, and eternal life of those who partake of Him. Salvation because Adam and Eve fell, and this is the beginning of fall. Forgiveness of sins because of the sin of Adam and Eve and the sin of every one of us, including definitely myself. And eternal life because death will not have dominion over us. So, think that God was kidding. I received, I received an email from a very, very famous pastor that I was uh, following on Twitter or something. So they have the, my information. So he, he, when this pastor is sending an email, he's sending to at least 100,000 people. I received the email just before our, uh, our Holy Week, a few days. And he is saying, congratulations for the celebration of the Holy Week. And, and, and I just want to let you know that, com that when God said, I am the door, he didn't say that he is literally the door. It is not that uh, you are not going to knock on the door and see, ah, oh, this is God. He is not a door. It is just on allegorical or uh, symbolic level. So when he says, I am the bread of life, he doesn't mean it. So don't take it that serious. He's just saying it for the, an example. Like, like you cannot go and eat the door, you don't need to eat the bread of life. Forget about me, forget about anyone else. Go and read John chapter 6 alone. Focus. If you have a big screen, put all the, 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 the translations in front of you and see if God is speaking serious or is just kidding. If you, for example, if I say, you know what, if you didn't give me my lunch today, I will jump off the cliff. That's symbolic. No, I'm serious about it. <laughs> uh, you see it. Don't give me the lunch, and I will, I will show you how I will. Pee lunch, pee lunch, pee lunch. Pee lunch? Pee lunch. But if I'm not, not that serious about it, then... Uh, it's, uh, do you know the, the, the joke that uh, Pope Shenouda said? I'm debating. Uh, so one guy stepped in the church, he went outside of the church, he didn't find his shoes. So he started screaming and he said, if I didn't get my shoes right now, I will do exactly as my brother did. And this is not good for you. A few minutes, the shoes came. He found the shoes, I didn't know what's going on. He took the shoes and he ate it. So people ran after him and told him, okay, good that you got, you got the shoes, but what was your brother doing? He said he was barefoot. <laughs> He, he was just kidding. I mean, okay, give me the shoes. And, but you, you see what the Lord is saying. From this moment, people started leaving the Lord. 
that he wants to bring people to him or to, to re- rebel or to make people stay away from him. He wants to bring everyone. But when it comes to communion, you see a completely different Christ. When it comes to communion, you see a completely different Jesus. Look. Then in verse 53, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink this of His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. He said it four times. This is the bread pointing to himself, which came down from heaven, not as your father ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, this is a hard thing. Who can understand it? And Jesus knew himself that his disciples complained about his, this, and he said to them, does this offend you? In verse, very fast forward to verse, verse 66. Now Jesus is speaking to the twelve. The disciples left. But those who are following Christ is not only the twelve or the seventy, there were thousands. So it said, and since that time, many of the disciples left. Because he's speaking about the bread of life. Then, look if he is, if he is really not serious about it. He will call the, the twelve and tell them, go call the people. I, I was not that serious. Uh, let us uh, deal, uh, make a deal, win-win setting. Yeah, why you are taking it that serious? Uh, we're just kidding. It's no big deal. And I just told you about I am the door. You didn't get offended that I am the door. The Lord is speaking to the twelve. John six sixty six. Is there any coincidence? I don't know. For that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said. To the twelve, do you also want to go away? What's going on? That for this moment, he came. For this moment, he waited all the three years. All the three years. Till the last time that they will see him. If you ask all the disciples, what was the last picture that you saw the Lord? Before the cross. All of you together. It was when they are taking the Last Supper. And just after the Last Supper, everybody dispersed. And they disappeared. So, when you put things in perspective, so communion is not just a, and I will go and, and listen to the refugee and take communion. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's, it's much, 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 much deeper, much uh, stronger, much more powerful to this moment, to the extent that he's telling the twelve, he's telling St. John who wrote the gospel, if you want to leave, leave to this, there is no compromisation, to the communion we are not going to, to do um, to negotiate back and forth it is done deal <coughs> and what has this to do with the tabernacle I heard a loud voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. It is the presence of God. And having the presence of God, and this is, I think, this is the key in all orthodoxy and all the apostolic churches, is the presence of God. You can do a lot of things. You cannot have an, an, an... if you are sick, you can take Tylenol, Advil, and you have a headache. You are okay. But you are bleeding and you are uh, critically ill. You cannot just say, ah, well, uh, I will take Advil and I will be fine. You go, you, you call 911 and you are admitted to the, to the ICU right away. Why? Because it's a life threatening. So when you are on our own, yeah, you can pray and you can read in the Bible and you can do a lot of stuff. But going to the ICU because it's a life threatening and you will have a blood transfusion, this is the church, this is communion, this is the liturgy. 
That's why you will find the liturgical prayer is the center that everything in the church is rotating about. Everything we do is, in the end, is liturgy. The Vespers, the Zbecha Midnight Prayers, uh, the services, the, and there is a nice, a nice um, road map for us as, as families. Every, me as a, as, a, as a dad or as a, as a parent or as, my, as an individual, we push, every, we push everyone to the church. And in the church, they push the kids to Sunday school to their servants. In the Sunday school, they push them to the priest. And in the, when they go to Abuna, Abuna is pushing them to the liturgy. So this is the path. There is no other path. Go to church, and church you will find the people who will help you, the people who will help you will push you to the, to the priest. The priest is going to push you to the altar or to which, which is God. So it is in the vision of God to be in the presence of man, to be one with us since Adam and Eve, but it, the fall happened. So the, 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 behold the tabernacle of God, this has been a theme since the beginning till the end. And God will wipe away every, every tear from their eyes and they shall no more have death or sorrow or nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. There is a common misconception even in, uh, in, uh, in the episode of Star Trek. If you are watching, if you have watched it, one of the, 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 the characters, a member of the Undying, you continue, longs for the end of his existence and look to the subtle messages that's coming in the media because he complains everything that could be said or done has already been said and done and now there is only repetition and utter boredom and he is extremely bored to, to the extent that he's saying, you know what, I want to kill myself because there is nothing new anymore he says for us this, he is saying in, in, the, in the episode for us the disease is immortality the problem is that we are going to live forever. And this is very, is extremely boring. And finally, he is allowed to end his existence. Look to Isaac as he moved the one who is writing the science fiction. One of them is the, 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 the very, very famous uh, writer. He is, say, he is saying this. I don't believe in an afterlife. So I don't have to spend my whole life fearing hell or fearing heaven. Even more. For whatever the torture of hell, I think the boredom of heaven would be even worse. And here when we are brainwashing people in a subtle message, when you see this, oh, then, then there is no heaven, then there is no hell, then there is no God, then let us eat and drink because we are tomorrow, we are dying. Even sometimes among the Christians, it is prevalent myth that heaven will be boring. Sometimes we even can't envision anything beyond uh, a harp or a polish. We are polishing the streets of gold. We have accepted Satan's strategy to blaspheme God and to slander His name and His dwelling place. In Revelation 13:6, it says that one of the strategies of the devil is to blaspheme against God and against his name, and against his dwelling place, against his name, and or his body, which is, every one of us, blaspheme against God is simple, or known, blaspheme against his name is known, but he is in his dwelling place, this means that blaspheming against heaven, it does not even exist, it does not even exist. Hell is the place of torment and isolation and where friendship and good times do not exist. He will be deadly, hell will be deadly boring, everything good, enjoyable or refreshing or fascinating or interesting is derived from God. Without God there is nothing interesting to do. And King David said this, and please keep this Bible verse in your mind. In your presence, David is saying this, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures furthermore. In your presence is fullness of joy. You know when, uh, when the, the people who were the, 
the, the, the three who got the talents, and one got five talents, one got two talents, and one got one talents, and the, the faithful, uh, good and faithful servant you have been faithful in, little I will grant you to be uh, in charge of many, enter into that. Enter into that joy of your master. ادخل إلى فرح سيدك. Joy of your master. So when you are very, very ex- not happy, you are you are full of joy from inside. You will never be bored. Even by definition, if you are full of joy, you will never be bored. And if the Bible is saying in your presence again, the presence of God. Is fullness of joy is the utmost joy ever that you can think of. Then there is no boredom in this setting. There is no boredom in the fullness of joy in the presence of God. At your right hand are the pleasures furthermore. And I always ask my kids, who created pleasure? Who created, who created fun? Because you are obsessed as parents, did you have fun? 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 As this is the, as it, yeah, we are watching fun now. So I asked them, who created fun? So they told me, God created fun. So I told them, God is more fun than His creation. God is even more fun than his creation. Because if the one who created, and I didn't meet uh, Disney personally, but the, the one who, who had all these dreams and all these uh, plans, definitely it was very fun to be with him. I don't know him personally. And I, uh, I haven't even uh, interacted with, the, with him, but the creator of fun, is, is always more fun than the fun itself. So when the Bible is saying in your presence is fullness of joy, and this is the key, the key of having a joyful life is feeling the presence of God. الوجود في معية الله الوجود في حضرة الله to be in the presence of God. I know that uh, my time is running, but I will um, I will move very quickly to tell you very important. A very important concept, and I will end here. This is a story. If you allow me two more minutes. This is a story, because I, I, I love this story so much. In 1952, there was um, a young Florence Shadwick stepped into the water of the Pacific Ocean of Catalina Island. You know Catalina Island? So this young lady, Florence, was determined to swim to the shore of the main land of California. I don't know where is the main land of California. If you know, let me know. I, I tried to search it. So she is... She, so she is uh, swimming from Catalina Island to the mainland. This exactly went from uh, France to UK back and forth the month she went back and forth. in the year 1952 she is the most famous swimmer in the whole world in that time and she is swimming from Catalina Island all the way to the mainland and she could not hardly see the boats accompanying her still she swam for 15 hours and when she back to, t- to be taken out of the water of, uh, along the way her mother in the boat alongside told her she was very close and that she could make it. Finally, physically, emotionally, she was extremely exhausted. She stopped swimming and she was pulled out. And it was not until she was on the boat, sitting on the boat, and looking through the other side, that she discovered that the shore was less than half a mile away after swimming 15 hours. 15 hours. And she was half a mile away. And when they interviewed her in the morning, she said this, all I could see was fog. I think if I could have seen the shore, I would have made it. 
if I have seen the shore, I would have made it. And I think this is sometimes why we don't pray, why we don't go to church, and why we don't serve, and why, ah, oh, let's have some, we are going to pray again, and we are going. Why? Because we are not seeing the shore. And we are, we are not mindful of the end. And after all this effort, I, I pray that in this day, we will, we will, all of us together will help to see the shore. Uh, the last thing is a saying from C.S. Lewis that I will end with. C.S. Lewis, he, ob- he, he said this, I observed, if you read history, you will find that Christians who did most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next world. So people who really have made a change in the life of all the people around them, in Christianity, they were looking for heaven. They were keeping their eyes on heaven. And the apostles themselves were set on the foot, on foot, the conversion of the Roman Empire, the great men who built up the Middle Ages, the English Evangelical who abolished the slave trade, all, their, all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied with heaven. And Bantonius, his mind was occupied with heaven. That's, that's why with one verse, St. Anthony the Great, who started monastic life, and we can go in, in, in this story for, for hours. Just one Bible, ver- one Bible verse. <laughs> that if I take the average of the age of the people and uh, take how many sermons we all of us have attended and how many Bible verses that we have done in our life, only one Bible verse changed the monastic life in the whole, that started monastic life in the whole world. So their mind were occupied with heaven. So what is uh, it is since Christians have largely ceased, stopped to think of the other world, that they have become so ineffective in this, ineffective in this life. We lost our efficiency, we lost our impact, we lost our influence on the people because we are not lo- no longer thinking of him. You know what Steve Jobs was, uh, was telling himself? Steve Jobs, he, he was not Christian as, as many of you uh, know. But the amount of things that went, that has been uh, done in the, li- the life of Steve Jobs is much, much more than the invention that has been done after Steve Jobs passed away. He was telling himself every day, think of what you are doing, just check on whatever you are doing. And if you think that, if, or if you find that this is not of the utmost importance, cancel it and revise what you are doing again. And he was almost chasing this idea of doing better things, doing because he knew that his life was short. But C.S. Lewis ended with this, and this is, if you didn't get anything from our talk, the importance of communion is a key, and this comment from C.S. Lewis, aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. You know, if, if, you, are, uh, if you are collecting balls or something and someone is throwing to you something as a gift, aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. You will get earth bones. Aim at earth and you will get... Can you read it? Neither. Aim at earth only and you will get neither. I remember a professor told me, when you aim for nothing, you keep getting nothing. When you aim for nothing, you keep getting nothing. Aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. Earth will come as a bonus. Aim at earth and you will get neither... And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abuna. Very uh, enlightening and uh, appreciate uh, Abuna's time. Yeah, you can see he invested too much time in the slides. There is no